Check out what's on the front page now. The Daily Graphic. Auditor General halts road projects with no funding. Avoid food with molds. It's poisonous, according to the Ghana Standards Authority. A flower border on high alert for COVID-19. Caged for seven years, Beza regains freedom. Jailed wrongfully for 15 years for defilement. Uh, how did that happen? La General Hospital closed for redevelopment. And earlier, the people in La were complaining. And they said, well, uh, if you may get the place before you shut it down, because uh, the rats, the rodents, would... Uh, inundate our homes. The Ghanaian Times. Government honors 34 students for excellent performance in 2019 BEC. Volta Regional Minister announces 10,000 Ghana cities bounty for arrest of assassins of Sogakope Assemblyman. Ghana loses $9.8 million to cybercrime, other criminal activities in 2019. ACP Dr. Gustav Herbert Yangsen, my very good brother, is there on the front page. Uh, police flash out criminals, arrest 31 suspects in soups in Accra. And uh, on the back page, Midyama Pip, uh, Great Olympics. Daily Guide. Mahama awards 5 billion Ghana City cocoa rolls with no cash. Ghana tests 29 for coronavirus cases and mayhem at Sogakope one shot. Uh, Senior Minister Defense Free SHS. The Finder newspaper, 71% of CEOs positive about local business conditions. Dr. Awal woos Moroccan investors. He's the business development manager, by the way, Dr. Mohamed Awal. One Ghana movement proposes seven ways to get ready, uh, Ghana ready for COVID-2019. And also, uh, Dr. Ishmael Norman of ISDIS last Saturday proposed what we need to do ahead of a worst case scenario if it does happen. Northern Region on Health Time Bomb. My guest this morning is Dr. Bernard Okoboy. He's a board chairman for the Kolibu Teaching Hospital. He's also the Honorable Member of Parliament for the Lejikuku constituency. Some choose to call him Lejikuku JC. Uh, he's here in this very beautiful bow tie. Doc, welcome. Good morning. Yeah. How are morning, you doing? Brother, by his grace, uh, I'm fine. On that year. A Christian gentleman. <laughs> yes, okay. And uh, <laughs> the Honorable, <laughs> the uh, comrade. Is this you know, called comrade. two seconds are uh, Christian gentleman. Yes. By training. Yes, yes. Blue magic. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We've seen a few of them in other places too. It's okay. And uh, <laughs> Comrade Mutala Mohammed is a former uh, Deputy Trade Minister. He's also in the race for the Tamale Central seat and hopefully to win it. Inshallah. Welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? We can't complain. I'm confident of shaking your hands because Dr. Okuboy brought uh, hand sanitizer from Kolebu. Made, and, uh, made in Kolebu. Made in Ghana, Ghana Kolebu. Actually, yeah. when, when I requested, you know what he told me? What did he say? That is for incumbent. Okay. So we are in opposition. We have to beg for it to be given. So but our lives you, you can always buy it. Our lives do not matter why they give it. Okay. But that was off <laughs> the set. But you can, you, can, you can always go and buy it. But yes. this, this was developed from Kolebu. Yeah, this was made in Kolebu. And okay. in fact, I'm very proud to say that we I, and the board mm -hmm. at the board meet encouraged the um, director of pharmacy okay. to take it up because the WHO approved formula is there. Okay. And most of the ingredients too can be sourced. And the reason why it's good to have such things mm. made at places like Kolebu is that over the, the, the motive, Mm. It's not primarily uh, profits, okay. but is to achieve the purpose right. of uh, reducing infections. Mm. So once um, results goes ahead of profits, you can trust the formula. Okay. But in these um, days of uh, infections and all that, people sometimes can, someone can be in his house, mm -hmm. be producing gallons of a formula yeah. solution and say it's a sanitizer. But the motive might be profits. Mm -hmm. So it's possible you even use it and you still have bacteria and viruses playing around your hands. Right. So that is why we encourage them to, okay. to come From out with a trusted product. source. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. So you can, you can always how, trust. How do you check fake products? Someone can easily yeah. imitate this. I think the, FDA, the, label. the, the FDA has mm. a few, um, um, how do you call it, processes you can go through with mm. the product. Mm. I remember Bright Simmons of Imani yeah. even yeah. had, even with Drasa, and pedigree. Code, uh, yeah, <laughs> and pedigree and all that. So, I mean, these are uh, things that we also must think of in these mm. days of uh, people always take advantage. Okay. And then you can just so this place. can only be bought from Kolebu. For now, mm. I think we will work on uh, distribution. For now, the only place I can speak I know is they have it in the hospital. Where, where in Kolebu? 
Oh, I mean, when you go to the administration and say okay. that you own some samples or the pharmacy department, because okay. it's produced by the pharmacy department. Okay. Yeah. I see. So, somebody brought me a, a complaint about the central medical lab in Kolebu. Okay. And they say there's a lot of privatization that's happening there. Uh, is that correct? Well, um, it's that, not... That uh, you're uh, you giving the thing to private people yeah, yeah, to set up yeah, their own thing yeah. in there and, and it's crippling our own central lab. Yeah. I think when, when we came in as uh, <coughs> leadership, in Korea, <coughs> there were two things that I had my eyes set on that had to be dealt <coughs> with okay. ASAP. Okay. The first one was industrial harmony. Okay. To make sure that the chaotic, you know, agitation workers and all that, mm. uh, that culture like goes down. And by the grace of God, we've worked hard at it mm. by engaging. That's the key thing. We engage a lot, mm. all groups, even groups that are not formally recognized. Once you are a group, two, three people, mm. we engage you. And we also communicate okay. on policies, mm. explain the motives, so that there's openness. Mm. So. That is one. The other issue, which is very critical, is imaging and labs. Okay. Most of the time, people judge Kolibu's efficiency by how many people go outside mm. to go and do laboratory investigations or do imaging, uh, like CT scans, mm. MRI, and all that. Before we went to Kolibu, not even one CT was working. Mm. So you are rushed to the emergency with... An injury in an but accident. Why were they not working? Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. It's it's, man, it's it's leadership. You know, uh, the infrastructure you've put in place to run such a unit. Are they working now? Yeah, they are working. All have, of them. Yes, because yes, yes. somebody also said fact, that the, the, there's a machine. I've forgotten, but yeah. there's a machine that's supposed to be working, which has been grounded, yeah. and a private contractor has been yeah. made to set up the same machine. So yeah, yeah, yeah. and so, we have so, not repaired. Yeah. So let, our let, own. let me give you information. When we went to Kolebu, most of their mobile X-rays, they okay. have a lot of X-rays which right. can be used at different places. Most of them were down. They were not working. Okay. The MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, who is the most complicated imaging machine. Mm. Those times we used to send footballers to Nigeria to go and take MRI. You okay. know, when that can detect right. injury to the tissue level. Okay. Kolebu's own was not working. Remember, what, what we had was one of the most sophisticated and modern MRIs in the whole Africa. I remember. There are just about two or three. Yeah. Yes. And then mm. uh, the CT scans also were down, not working. So when we came, quickly we got... Um, um, a company that deals in those machines, they came, serviced them, we signed a contract with them so that they would be, not that when it has a problem, we will fly them, or mm. they, had, they have men at the unit. Okay. So as I speak, the MRI is working. The CT scan, they repaired the CT scan, it had, they had to put in some tubes, gases, we got all fixed, because it was a general hour, I told them, our imaging must work. Okay. And that also uh, became, I mean, up, it started working. Then the board decided that beyond Kolebu's 100% owned CT scan, mm. we should have a backup, a second line, through a partnership. Which one takes precedence? Which one takes precedence? You know, you know, the, the one owned by the state? No, no, no. You or see, the one being... We are into service team. delivery. It is better to even have a private partner, like to go into partnership with someone. So that if yours, one machine is not enough, Kolebu ideally should have about three or four CT scans. Okay. Because of the numbers. Kolibu has huge numbers. The pressure on the machine is huge. Mm. So there are some of these machines elsewhere. One works for some time, another takes over so that they can have a downtime and recover and all that. So what we did was that we said we don't want a situation where even if it must go down for one hour, mm. the patient will be turned away. So that's what led to the... It, and okay. it's a PPP. Mm. So okay. that mm. it is better for us to have go into partnership mm. so that when you are, you are brought to Kolibu, you are not told to drive to East Legon or to Kaswa Go and take a CT scan. <coughs> come back before even the doctor starts looking at you. Okay. For some of these scans, the doctor needs to see them before he gives you the first shot of medicine. Okay. Like in a stroke. Mm. Whether the stroke is a bleeding mm. or a clot. Mm. You give, you assume it's bleeding. You give a drug for bleeding. If it's a clot, you'd rather push the patient to death. So that is And I'm happy to mention that as we speak, the second line is also active. Okay. And for each scan that is taken, the private investor gets his uh, inflow to try to recoup the investment. Kolebu itself also gets... Who is getting more attention? Is it our, our state Both, owned? both. You see, in by fact... What, by what percentage? 50-50? No, I mean, if we put zero in. Okay. When I say zero, we do not put even a dollar. Right. All okay. we did, all we have is the... To the give patients. them space to do. But I'm saying yes, that yes. if the yes. state has that machine yeah. or those machines, yeah. we have the central lab as yeah. well. Yeah. And we have uh, a section also privatized yeah. to yeah. allow people... Yeah. 
do we give more attention to our state-owned one, or do we give fact, attention the advantage, to what is happening there now? Are two there are two things. Both the state ones, the state ones are working. In fact, our attention is even greatest on the state ones for a simple reason. Mm. As board and management, our prime focus is ours, the state. But you see, there are some inefficiencies which are structural. Which are? Oh, when I say inefficiencies, which are structural. Where you have a unit, you've mm. given them, let's say, even the regions they need to run the lab. And then, based on the inflows, what they generate, mm. is not able to meet what you gave them. You understand? Mm. You must source resources from other places. And because there's competition... But, but why, why is that? I mean, if the that, private man can do yeah, it no, no, go, with the same expertise, when, why can't I do it? When I say structural, it? you know yourself mm. that the inefficient that exists in public places, you reduce them over time. Okay. You cannot, in a year, get every inefficient... It's, been, say, it's, it's been, been three years and no, more. No, no, but before we came in, I've told you, no machine worked. Call anybody who works in Kolebu and ask but why, them. Why were they not working? Uh, it's see. the inefficiencies. So, uh, I'm coming. It's the inefficiencies. And you see, I don't want to start mentioning names or departments, and you, you don't want to antagonize. Mm. But the, it's about the solutions. Okay. And I'm proud to say that when you come to Kolebu now, the doctors, the nurses, just talk to a few, talk to a few doctors, mm. go go to the ground, talk to them. You can even record their voices. It is clear that many things that were down in in fact within a month, about five X-rays which were down mm. came back. We didn't buy a part. Okay, it just took assessments, booting. Changing software, they were all the, back. The, the MRI, finally, the yeah. MRI, yeah. Uh, I understand, was brought in. The people who were contracted to bring it and install it yeah. are not the ones who are maintaining it. Okay. Now. Is that correct? Absolutely. Why, you know, why not? I don't, they don't have the competence I think anymore. the good news is that machines which are down as we speak are working. And two, we have a maintenance agreement on paper. In fact, before we came... You don't see a very structured, definite maintenance agreement. It's like people are called in when a need arises. Sometimes even the, the excuse is that you, we need a lot of money to fix some machines. And it's sort of ad hoc mm. and not structured. We have a structured agreement. Forgive me, but let me say this. Some of the people who bring this information or talk as if there's something wrong, when the machines were down totally, they had no issue. It tells you something. I have said it when I met workers. Every time I meet Kolibuka, I tell them, I tell them that Kolibu must not be non-functional for okay. you to survive in your private okay. practice. Both can survive. Mm. Don't let this one collapse because you want yours to be up. Right. The reason is simple. You can be rushed to Kolibu, I can be rushed there. Let's make sure that this place, which is the last point of resort, is working. And forgive me, some are not happy mm. that things have started working. The best way to reduce the numbers going out to do procedures is to find innovative ways of making sure a patient does not drive to East Legon to take a scan. Okay. But they are done there. And Thank the you. lab, the lab too, mm. the central lab, we, we have all we, our support. We need to allow. Mm. Absolutely. We, the central lab, they get all our support. If we talk to members there, we are giving all our support. But the issue is that we brought in another arrangement, a partnership, so that some of the labs that over the years end up almost all the time going away, we said we'll do it in Kolebu. And we actually benchmark our results, I'll not mention names, we turn on the top labs that people fly to South Africa mm, and all that. Mm. And guess what? When it was shown to the professors, our labs were up more to the levels than even the S. Okay. See, see this, my, my friend, I, I don't want to falter him because he's the board chair, but at least I have some information as to what happens in Kulebu. You know, you realize that there is one particular phrase that runs in all the statements he mm. made, mm. that before we came, before yeah, we came, yeah. as a matter of fact, don't create the impression as if things were so dire and that when we came, things are just absolutely perfect. There are still some challenges. Okay. Look, I use the MRI machine personally in 2016. Okay. So when you sit here and then you say that before you came, the MRI machine was not functioning. The CCTV, CCT, uh, CT, machine, scan. CCT uh, CT scans CT scan. were not functioning. I use it in 2016. As a matter of fact, these are machines that are working. At any point in time, of course, they would be having some problem. You need to maintain them. I would be shocked that we could install such machines without any measure put in place to ensure that they are serviced by Kulibu. And here I'm not talking about we 
politicians, mm -hmm. but the management of Kulibu. Of course, he is a political appointee. He is part of the management of Kulibu today because he is the chair of the Kulibu you know, board. But I'm saying that there are still some challenges. The issue of private you know, individuals taking over the responsibilities of the lab. It's a serious issue. He says, what, what, it's a serious, he wants look, to have please, a collaborative It's a serious effort. issue. The state-owned lab is virtually not functioning. Really? Well, no, yes. No, I'm saying that it's virtually not functioning. No, no, functioning. I'm, I'm not saying it's not. I'm, I'm saying I'm that it's virtually I'll, not. I'll, I'll it is virtually not functioning. How do you know this? No, I have not. been to... I, he yeah. knows I, I come to Kolibu yeah. often. I have, I have a, lot of, a lot of friends at Kolibu and I, I, I go to Kolibu often. And I'm saying that there have been incessant complaints. Of course, it's possible as a board chair, he may not be aware. But I can no, tell, I, I I'm the, saying that there are a lot I of complaints. The, In fact, the, uh, private facilities springing up around Kolibu escalated escalated after this government came into office. And it is not only in Kolibu. Go to Tamale. And I'm happy that we are discussing some of these issues. Go around the Tamale teaching hospitals. There are pharmacies that are springing up every corner within Tamale. And those pharmacies have direct links with doctors or medical workers who are working. No, no, in doc, the Dr. Okoboy, for example, says that, look, don't be happy that a state-owned institution yeah. is, is grinding to a halt. But rather, we can make both your private enterprise and the state you see, enterprise it's, it's work. A defeatist, it's a defeatist stand wh wh to, say that, that so? to say that. And he even asks that you also know how running state you know, institutions are the challenges therein. That is the reason why you were appointed. That is the reason why you have a management. If you think that there are challenges that are confronting state-owned institutions that are being run, we should move away from these excuses that yes it is the state owned that is being run and we are all aware of the challenges that state institutions go through that is why it ought to be fixed look if there are people who ought to be moved mm. from where they are you move them i can understand that under state institutions you cannot employ people in, on, on contract but as management of kolibu if you think that look uh, look he's not just a, he has been a medical doctor i guess mm. in kolibu before he joined you know politics mm. even if it is not in kolibu mm. he is he a medical doctor by the way. i'm saying he that he would have been aware of the challenges that kolibu is confronted with what i think that we can all do as people who are appointed to 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 execute some responsibilities if you cannot sack people give them conditions look this problem ought to be fixed and I give you this particular time to fix it. All the necessary support logistically mm. that ought to be provided, I would ensure that those facilities or those logistics are provided. It is then the responsibility mm. of those who head those institutions mm. or those departments to ensure that they are improved. No, but, but if you want to say, mm. because this is, you know, accustomed to all mm. state institutions, you know, when people, individuals run state institutions, we have some of these this, this challenges. I think that no, this is a Doc, for stand. example, says that nobody should be turned away from callable yeah. because they have to make a referral to go and do uh, imaging somewhere. Yeah. But he wants Kolebu to be that one-stop shop so that while there's pressure on the state facility, yeah. the private sector that's been brought in can also offload some of that pressure and you will be served in quick time and your life will be saved. Yes, that, this, that's a good on thing, this isn't it? I agree. On this program, there was an issue I raised. And thank God he was here. I made a statement that for the admission of students into the nursing training college at Kolebu. They invited every single person who, ap who applied for, for, for admission mm. and took compulsory 100 Ghana cities from every single person. Compulsory. 100 Ghana cities. There were thousands of students who applied for admission at the Kolebu nursing training college. And it was not only Kolebu all the nursing training colleges across the country. But I can talk about Kulibu, and that is why he was here when I raised that issue. And he assured us that he was going to ensure that he investigate the matter. And up to date, he hasn't done that. Hande Ghana cities. You know why? You know, you know why? You know why? Do you know why it was criminal? No. I'm, I'm coming. Let me, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I finish? Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Do you know why it was criminal? Do you know why it was criminal? You, you can't ascribe crime. Can I finish? Can, you know, let me finish. He should allow me to finish. If you know that you have spaces for only 96 students that they admit, is it 96, 97? And about 3,000 students applied for admission, mm. Mm. for example. And you know that 96 students you want to, to take, they won't have the same requirements. So what you do is that 
you look at the number of students you want to take and say, mm -hmm. okay, you should meet this particular requirement. Those within this, then those who have not been able to meet that requirement will not even be invited for the, the interview, let alone mm -hmm. giving them ad admissions. Now, if you do that, you can maybe add, you can invite 200 students, and you know that you are taking 96. Then you interview the 200 students. At least you can get your 96 mm -hmm. out of the 200 students. Now, you invited almost over the 3,000 students who Immigration who Service invited and demanded And demanded that they each pay 100 Ghana cities, non-refundable, without any receipt. They each paid the 100 Ghana cities. When you knew too well that you are not going to admit okay. all of them. Let, let that it, is criminal. Let him respond to yeah. it. I know that the Immigration Service also invited yeah. some 84,000 young people and took, money, and took right? only 500 Johnny, people. Yeah, yes. Johnny, and did they pay money? Yes, they, Johnny, they, they, they've paid for the forms. That is criminal. You know, by way of education, mm. the, the nursing school, it's not, let's say, a department or agency of Kodibu. Okay. It just bears the name because it's been it's like there. Kunde. Okay. They use a lot of our facilities. But it's just like Lekma Nursing Training. Okay. It's one of the training institutions of the state. Okay. That the Ministry of Health. Okay. <coughs> and they, <coughs> sorry, they have a unit that... They manage... Yes. Okay. I'm coming. Allow, 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 allow him to explain. The hospital. No, no, no. <coughs> Absolutely. So who took the no, 100 Ghana? No, no. So, like, for by way of education... It is cited in Kolibu. You know, Kolibu is under Ministry of Health. Right, I mean, right. the so there are a lot of Ministry of Health um, agencies. agencies there. Even okay. Blood Bank, the mm. National Blood Bank, is mm. not. It's zero Kolibu. When I say zero, mm. board management has nothing to do with okay. it. But the land on which it works is Kolibu, right. but it's at the ministry and all that. So it's the same with the nursing. Okay. I talked to Asabre, who was then in charge of all nursing training Famous. He said he said they were going to go into it, and admittedly, you know, we do a lot of things. I would encourage him. Even beyond after the set, we should not come here before. He should. So we don't me. know who took the money. No, no, I've given it to them. Okay. What they are doing, what they are investigating. But it's been more than three months. Three, months. three months. More than six months. You see, it's because it's possible they've even finished. I've admitted that it's because I've not asked him to give me results. Because the first he said is that they will look into it for one reason. Because as we speak, he made a claim. I didn't believe it was an official charge. Okay. Two, I don't know whether it was limited to that institution alone for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So the top had to check okay. and then cross-check with them whether really it was taken. And you know, Johnny, in these mm -hmm. days, someone called me and said he wants to go to army. But someone said, oh, if he pays 500 Ghana, they will go. Mm -hmm. I really can't tell whether maybe some of the students he, he talked to, what this money came officially from the school. That's why mm -hmm. I said, mm -hmm. you remind me so that before we meet on the set, okay. these details I can get from the institution give to you. Right. Johnny, on the issue of the machines, mm -hmm. you see... There are bottom lines, Which and, Musta, and uh, Mutala knows that. When all is said and done, there are mm -hmm. some basic questions you ask. That's why I said there were two things that Kolibu had to tackle immediately. Okay. Industrial harmony, and two, if you have mm -hmm. 10 private labs outside Kolibu, Johnny, look at how complicated and sensitive this is. Mm -hmm. 10 private labs, mm -hmm. and the ones behind all the 10 labs work in, let's say, Kolibu Central Lab. Mm -hmm. What you do is not to take them, confront them, and say, hey, close your labs. That's going to the symptom and not the cause. Mm -hmm. What you do is to make sure that the service is provided in Kolibu. But you don't bring a private no, I'm, I'm coming. Provider. You see, Johnny, you see, some of the discussions, there are discussions you can have openly. There are some I can have with you in confidence. You don't want your discussions <coughs> to antagonize anybody. Right. But I'm telling you that some of the units which you have identified rightly, that the investors or the owners are in the hospital. If the same people find themselves at where the service must be delivered, and for some reason you even give them what they need, and because of their interest mm. at other places, mm. the system is not working. You f you find a way mm. to make sure the service is rendered within. But, but bottom line is that the sick person who comes to the hospital Ma would get the service. must be treated. Uh, exactly. That's the bottom <coughs> line. Yes, and that's my and bottom at line. At a cost that they can afford. Uh, absolutely. Because if you have to, you are brought in an ambulance after getting an, a crash, mm. and you are asked to drive to Kasua, is they going to take a scan and come back to Kolebu before the doctor can see you? Assuming you are even paying 600 at Kaswa and you are paying 700 in Kolebu, what you are saved is the time. The time of driving to mm. Kolebu and uh, Kaswa or Islego and back. And that is what will save your life. So that's why I have said, and please, and let's be honest with ourselves, some of these problems, you tackle it totally with capital investment. Okay. So, let, John, let's, let me, let's, let's move conclude. on. If you have a city scan that costs, let's say, $2 million, mm. and the adequate numbers you need is, let's say, four or five, you need a $10 million investment at one department. And because he's been in government before, government has limited resources. I would prefer. Do we have? No, I'm coming. Oh, please. I would prefer <laughs> that that 10 million investment is met, if not totally by government, with partners as well. 
so that the resource is that we are able to take scans of everyone. Let, let's comes. take care yeah. of the machines that we use state resources to Absolutely. No, no, uh, do we have technicians there? Yes, so we have. So how, how, the, look, how and, did they and, break down? And in terms of management, we've done... I mean, so how, how, did the man, how did the machines break down? We, that's, why I, people that's why I said that. Week on week, no, no, that's why I said month that. on month. There are some, if you're a leader, there are some discussions. You know, they have meetings with press. They have closed door meetings too. I can have some closed door meetings with you. Okay. But bottom line is that we've had changes. Board has looked at management levels, mm. leadership changes. <coughs> we've done training and all that. In fact, for your crazy. information, in Kolebu Teaching mm. Hospital now, before you able, you go near the CT scan, you do a biometric uh, your finger okay. it was not like that before okay there are cameras in there okay so that Thank each you. one who goes near a machine the fellow can be accountable okay yes. sensitive one though yes. that i yes. just received somebody says that the water from the kolebu morgue goes into the kole lagoon is it true water water from kolebu I, I mean i don't think it's water i'm sure it's talking about what they do over there yes. i'll check in terms of the um, if it does, yeah. that's that's not a good thing. I'll, I'll check. I just, I'll I, just check. I just had a text yeah. from someone in Tamil. I'm not too sure. Yeah. And it's good that we are discussing this yeah. MRI machine. Okay. Thing. Let's let's the wrap up on this one. The, mm. the MRI machine in Tamil has stopped working for months. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, <sighs> um, by okay. the way, Johnny, you know, as a country, there are things you have to look at. If any journalist is interested, check what happened to CT scans that were established in most teaching hospitals mm. in this country some years ago. Cape Coast. It's been a white elephant since it was set up. Millions of dollars never worked. In fact, the scavenge pipes. No, 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 no. My brother, you. I know you. You are a nationalist too. Yeah. Ghana first. Check. There was a serious problem with both the implementation of that. It was a contract mm. nationwide mm. to set up this high capital intensive machines. Right. My brother, in the north, a health committee. We went around the country in Tamale for some funny reasons. They've not even been able to operate it. No, they. Yes. they, 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 they so, no, they no, 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 I'm telling you. No, no, I'm checking. You know, there isn't one okay. reason. No, no, this issue. I hear you. There isn't one reason. This issue. Oh. If you say they've worked, I'm, 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 I'm aware they were working. In fact, I had patients no, no, that have always visited Tamale Teaching Hospital. Let's talk about roads. But they haven't been working for some time now. Johnny, the Cape Coast example. I know sometimes you do these social projects. Cape Coast built a whole radiology center, a new one opposite the hospital. I worked in Tamale. Teaching us, right, people right, teaching us. Right. My brother, it's been a white elephant since the machines were established. Check Number what happened. Right. Since 2015 or 14. I said, check. Serious problems. <laughs> check with Cape Coast. It's sitting down. Look, nobody's using go it. Go with cameras. White elephant. And you know the worst part? The scavenge. When a part breaks down, let's say in Cape Coast. Okay. Um, Kolebu. Kolebu, they go there, take some parts, bring it. I'm telling you, I'm being. So how are the people of Cape Coast being served? So how are the people of Cape Coast being served? They are not getting that service. them to fix parts at least. Oh, I'm being on. I said go and check. Okay, join us zero two zero two one six 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 three three. The state of your health system, and the I I just had to had this conversation because of the raging concern about the coronavirus. It's, it seems to be getting closer and closer. The assurances are there. But, Butala, do you really feel safe? Well, I, I really don't think that anybody feels safe globally. But let me say good morning to your cherished viewers and, of course, the good people of Tamale Central. Mm. We, had, we started our door-to-door -door campaign, and I just want to thank the entire executive of Tamale Central and the people of Tamale Central for the cooperation, the mm. assistance, and the human's job that the executive and other branch executives have been engaged in it's, it's a tedious job. Mm. Tamale Central is a very big constituency with a huge population. You are talking about the constituency. You are talking about you are talking about a constituency that has almost hundred thousand people or more. And I believe that if they conduct the census, it will be more than. I think that Tamale Central is too big a constituency as compared to many constituencies across the, the country. And you have to move from one house to another. It's mm. extremely excruciating. So that's why I just have to thank my constituency chairman, chairman FK, and the entire constituency executive and the branch executive. We went round, and mm. when we go to any branch, we are assisted by the branch executive to go around the cooperation. It was it was extremely, you know, interesting right. moving okay. around. Uh, my my good friend, uh, I just want to say good morning to him too. Mm. John, I don't think anybody is safe oh, in this country. Johnny, I don't think anybody anybody <laughs> is safe in this country or even in the world because you can never tell who has it. And the fact that it's a pandemic and we still do not have a cure mm. or a vaccination that will take care of it. So nobody is safe. We are all at risk. We can only pray and hope 
that those who are mandated with the responsibility to ensure that we are protected mm -hmm. do so. I listened to a conversation by a journalist who traveled with the president right. you know, to Norway, Norway. your FM mm -hmm. journalist yesterday, and he said that Norway, they have their cases too. Norway right. is just a country with a population of 5 million, mm. and they have about 19. It was one on Thursday, and within a week, it rose Sounds to 19 right. people who have it. The president was there when mm. this thing happened. When they arrived in Ghana, according to the journalists, he was surprised that they were not even screened. They only used the, the screen. The, the, and, okay, he, yeah. and he felt that it wasn't enough. To check their temperature. Exactly. They are coming from a country that in the have had their cases of, of it. So as to whether we are prepared as a state for it, I really don't think we are. Forget of the rhetorics that we get from official government and from politicians. Mm. Look, this is not an issue of politics. This should be an issue of national concern to all of us. And I would not attempt to do politics with it. Mm. But I can only demand that those who are clothed with the responsibility and the powers, the means, the resources to ensure that we are all protected mm. do, do so. Because look, Coronavirus doesn't distinguish between an NDC person and an MPP person, mm. or it doesn't distinguish between a Dagomba man and an Asante man or an mm. Ivy man. It mm. doesn't distinguish. It comes as a tax. And the, the level, we are communal in nature as a people. Absolutely. Even those who live in some parts of the country pretending to be individualistic, they are communal. Mm. Even within our household, you certainly would have your, niece, your nieces and your nephews who live with you. Look at how we, we relate. Look at our buses, our places of worship. You go to the mosque. We all pray. We stand side by side. You shake hands after prayer. When you are getting out, even in the mosque, we don't. But of course, we are standing closer mm. to each other. Mm. Look at our churches. We sit together. We do those things. And there have been instances like South Korea mm. where you have a particular church that has registered thousands of people mm. who mm. have been tested with this. As to whether we have it, we still do not know. In as much as we, we, people are asking us to pray, yes, we pray. But you see, God himself warned people who don't only pray, but you pray and work for the, okay. the, the results. Faith so I think without that, works is Yes, I think we need to, what we need to look at, now we have it in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, Nigeria, mm, Nigeria as Senegal. A case, Senegal have just had their case. And in all these Cameroon countries, well. in all these countries, countries, there are other nationals who visited those countries. The danger about it is that, that it can be in a person for about 28 days undetected. Initially, they said 14 days. It turned out that it was in someone for 28 days. Is it possible it can be in someone for more than a month or two months? You may not know. Because hitherto, the belief was that it can last in a person for 14 days mm. until it starts showing symptoms. Mm. Only for them to realize that it can travel up to 28 days. It's possible that it can be more than that. My understanding is that Ebola and SARS are more, you know, lethal and, and, and deadly than it. But the level at which this thing spreads and the fact that we still do not have a cure, mm -hmm. the fact that we still do not have a vaccine, that makes it extremely worrying. What we can all do mm -hmm. is individually we need to take care of our health. Yeah. And my worry also has to do with our kids. Okay. They go to school, mm -hmm. they mingle with mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. All kids are coming from different homes, different backgrounds, right. as to where the parents are coming from, mm -hmm. who they have gotten in contact with, we right. do not know. Mm -hmm. And you know kids, the way they live, particularly those at this younger they, ages, they play. they play together, they rub each other's faces. Mm -hmm. You can never tell. And that is why, for me, I think it's worrying. It started as a Chinese problem. It started as a problem in China. Mm -hmm. I think that we've, uh, we have moved away from that. There have been a lot of lies, too, that have been peddled, okay. you know, particularly uh, through social uh, media, uh, mm -hmm. that even China at a point decided that they were going to kill people who had mm. coronavirus. You have all manner of illnesses and sicknesses that people share, particularly on public platforms, as to what is coronavirus and what it can. I think that self-prevention is what we need to do. But we must, be, we, we must do more than we are doing, considering the fact that our bodies are extremely porous. Okay. And I think for me that is worrying. Okay, Doc, are we ready? Uh, you, yeah. you, are, you are a doctor, you are a board chair, you belong to the health committee in parliament. From where you sit, are we ready? Yeah, you know, um, you, can, you can never be ideally ready. When I say ideally, in public health. I have some public, I have public Optimally. health. Optimally. There are a list of things we ask that you have in place. Not even the U.S. Okay. on a scorecard mm. would have hit 100%. So you can never be ideally ready. But you must have the structures or the systems in place so that you can absorb 
whenever it comes. The WHO says we have done 30 percent of that. Yes, so that you can absorb. Yeah, that's why I said a scorecard. Nobody hits 100, and you normally need both training, both mm. investment, and you need structural preparedness. When I say structural preparedness, you should have had some systems in place already, mm. because ultimately a case will end up in the hospital. Right. So if you are a country with even not adequate numbers of health uh, institutions or you have a lot of people going to one place, mm -hmm. then you can have issues and all that. We have, we have 12 beds at Kolebu, uh, yeah. uh, Tema, Tema General Hospital. Yes, yes. Let me, let me quickly say that, um, so, corona, the family of viruses, referred to as coronaviruses, mm -hmm. are known already. They are there. Um, they are zoonotic viruses. They are normally living animals. And then through relationship, like close contact, they come to humans. Mm -hmm. And so, for the scientific community, what made SARS, H1N1, Corona, what made them notorious or popular mm. on the news is that because of advancement in knowledge, okay. we are able to isolate a virus mm. and tell its genetic makeup. Genetic makeup means that how it's, the nature how it's of the virus. Formed, right? exactly. So if most, we can have 100 variants or 1,000 variants of Corona, mm -hmm. once they are known already, it's no news because we would have had a vaccine. Okay. You develop based on the genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. Immediately, they isolate a virus that makeup is not on the list mm -hmm. for the scientific community. It's news. Right. So, Johnny, that is the category in which this corona, uh, the uh, COVID-19. COVID mm -hmm. So, when it was isolated under the electron microscope, they realized that, and then they did the PCR, split its makeup. Oh, we've not had this before. It's a variant of the group. That is why it's caught a lot of, uh, how do you call it, attention. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to downplay, but we also need to be careful in our communication. If you look at <coughs> H1N1, mm -hmm. the death rate mm -hmm. was over 20%. Right. If you look at a condition like severe acute respiratory syndrome, that's SARS, SARS. death rate was about 20%. Mm -hmm. That's if 100 people get it, 20 die. 20 die, okay. If you look at MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, it was mm -hmm. another, uh, caused by another virus. Right. It was 30%. Mm -hmm. If 100 people get it, 30, 30 die. die. Mm -hmm. If you look at Corona, mm. the death rate is 2%. Okay. If 100 get it, 2 die. Early days yet. No, no, I, I know, but you see, these are the things we use to because you need, you don't want to create panic. Okay. And they said, I want to prepare. So public health, we do two things at the same time. Okay. You have to give the foundation for assurance okay. and at the same time, help people to prepare. Okay. So I also take interest in the assurance aspect. But, but, now, but on what altar or which altar do you assure? I mean, when no, no, I'm coming. there are basics no, that no, you so, are talking yeah, no. about. And we for don't citizens, have them. look, the information out there. Citizens think if 100 people get corona, all of them are going to die. So mm -hmm. you also need to give some assurance and all I'll right. come to appreciate. Okay. So in the U.S., 8,000 people got infected from one point source. Not mm -hmm. from two sources. Okay. One person had the virus. When it was tracked in the community, mm -hmm. nationwide, 8,000 of people who tested positive, not came ill with corona, mm -hmm. but tested positive for corona, came were tracked to one point source. And out of the 8,000, less than 100 had symptoms. Are you getting mm -hmm. it? Less than 100. And those who died were just about two of them. So what is the lesson here? The lesson is that you have to take personal care of yourself. And I'll mention some of the things. All right. But please, don't start knocking heads together and uh, going to depression because we are all about to die. I hope you get, I get that. It. Yes. I get now, it. the second point I also want to As make is that... the end is near. Yeah, exactly. The second point I also want to make is that, remember, most of the people who died were 65 and above. Right. They are the most at risk because as you grow beyond 65 and other... Susceptibility. Your, exactly. Mm. Your immune system. And you have comorbidities. It means you might have other medical <coughs> conditions. Okay. So when a virus enters your system, it is not really the that virus that leads to your death, it but it's because it. your system is already Weak fraught with other things. Okay. Kids under two years don't have very robust systems like adults. So they are really, they go down easily okay. with a viral infection. Not only corona, influenza, adenova, any mm. virus mm. can drive a child down if you don't come in early. Let me talk about Ghana's preparation. Okay. We might not be like the US, mm. where already before corona came, let's say they have strong in terms of health system, mm. uh, hospital numbers, staff, and all that. Mm. But what we have done is similar to what is being done in most countries, including the U.S. First, we form a national technical coordinating committee. What do they do? Today, as we speak, they will sit on all possible cases that came across the country that look like corona and ask what was done. The manner in which they were taken. Is it proper? Were there lapses? So that's what the national does. Okay. They also are in charge of see what the uh, borders are doing in terms mm. of surveillance mm. entry so i came from sierra leone about three days ago when i got to the airport i was they gave me the gun okay 
when they shut the gun, once your temperature is less than 37.5, mm -hmm. that is normal temperature. If you cross 37.5, that is a high uh, temperature. It's a fever. We must find out why. So that is uh, you are will be picked okay. up. It's been done at uh, what's the name? Um, Kutuka. Kutuka. Okay. The only thing I can add that maybe we we should we can add, which they is not there, is adding sanitizers and all that, so that on the flight, whatever you've touched, <coughs> once you clean, okay. you can. And the virus, the way we pick Apollo, you know Apollo, the yeah, popular, yeah, yeah. we call it viral conjunctivitis. Okay. Apollo is caused by a virus. Okay. The reason why it spreads fast is that the, what moves it mm. is the hands the or hand. services. Once you ingest it, you're So fine. once it's here and I touch this place, it's here. Okay. if I get an itch and I do this, then I have you contract it. It's the same way the corona. So, so anytime, and I touch them. yes, of course. If I have Apollo now, <laughs> and and I, I you you touch a surface, please give me some. <laughs> but I don't have Apollo. I don't have corona. You know. So <laughs> basically, the point I'm trying to we make are is protecting that ourselves. Protecting exactly. Ourselves. Yeah. So you can you can add this at the ports. But the reason why maybe they've not added, I also know. Immediately you clean with this, and before you go to the how do you call it? The one that carries Arrival. the bags. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, I forgot bags, to go out. Yeah. Yes. So you can be given this before you go through immigration. But immediately you pick your bag or touch any surface, it comes again. it's gone back to square one. You so know that we have at, at various points, for example? Yeah. Various no, no, points. No, absolutely. Churches, yeah, schools, yeah, 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 yeah. malls. So we have to encourage airports, people. Airports. We have to encourage people. Hammer, exactly. Football. To have a lot of... Yeah. Look, when I, we landed at uh, the airport at yeah. Freetown, Sierra Leone, we washed our hands. They had a Veronica bucket. Right. That's yes, the, yes, yes. Veronica. We wash our hands. You can either wash or choose the gel. Sanitizer. And they also gave us the gun. Okay. So the only thing they had in addition to ours... Can, was we, the, not, can we not have the it? No, no, why, why not? We can add. But that's why I'm saying that. You see, you don't want to control it at every point. But you want the education to go out that as much as possible, frequently, use the sanitizer or um, a soap with running water. Right. And that is being done, but it's not perfect. WHO so is asking for us to add more money. And yes, last yes. last uh, yeah. Saturday, Professor Fred Benker, for example, yeah. says we don't have a disease, uh, a wholly disease uh, control well, hospital. Well, well he's, he's, he's an, he's and, an and he mentioned, so. for example, that Kolebu used to have the fevers unit. Yeah. Today, it is yeah, yeah. really so not it's good. good. So some of our preparations also has to do with capital, like putting in money. I know the ministry committed, the government committed. About he says there are hospitals that have not been opened. We should open them yes. and use one yes. of them as a complete disease, for, complete for unit, disease, infectious yeah. diseases right. unit. So if you look, there's training going on. I saw some pictures from uh, University of Ghana Medical Center, right. the new place. Right. They were training their staff okay. on corona. Okay. The one doing the training was in a complete mm. PPE, mm. Protective, mm. personal protective equipment. These are things that you have to use if you're approaching a patient. How so many you know, do we have? Yeah, the numbers can be scaled up, but we have some in place. At REACH, They've gone through training so they can handle a case at Tema General. You see, you know Ebola was in this country. Mm. Ebola was in Ghana. The only case of Ebola we had, the person passed. He had traveled from Burkina through these trucks, those people who passed through trip. Luckily, they suspected it immediately landed at Tema General Hospital. Okay. And the fellow was vomiting blood and all that. And they did all that they had been trained. To in terms of, exactly. So training is important. If they are not being trained, they might have handled it in a way that would have spread the virus. Are we training our people? There's training. Kolebu, there's training going to Kolebu, there's training going to our reach. When I say this, it does not mean it's we are done. So why did the people yeah. flee when they had a suspected case at Kolebu? Oh, I mean, that was... <laughs> no, no, you know, there are two reasons. The first <laughs> one... No, no, yes. the first one is that... They abandoned the, no, no, the emergency... There are two things. Water. The first one is that if you go to Tema General, where you'll be taken, mm. it's not a ward with other cases. Okay. The Kolebu emergency unit had stroke cases, had trauma cases, all kinds of cases. No, the okay. people actually... No, I'm coming. You don't, introduce, you don't introduce a suspected viral case like corona into a unit like that. Right. You create a mess. Mm. That's why in other countries, tell you don't even rush to go to the hospital. Okay. Contain yourself. Receive help. Help will come. Mm. So if you go to Tamajana now with a suspected case, you'll not be taken to the emergency where I've worked before, right. which has malaria case and a mm. child. Mm. You are taken straight to the isolation unit. That's what Tema has. That's what uh, Rich has. And then, Johnny, lastly, let me say that few tips. We should regularly wash our hands. And by the way, washing hands or using this does not only take you away from corona. Most conditions, disease conditions, are transmitted by our hands. From your eye infections mm -hmm. to your sinuses to pneumonia, most of them, even typhoid fever, mm -hmm. is the hands that carry typhoid fever. Mm -hmm. So, any individual that does hand washing, in fact, the most powerful preventive tool mm -hmm. is hand washing. Mm -hmm. And um, let me uh, mention that Dr. Nsiyansari, mm -hmm. the former DG 
I mean, he's 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 a, a, a very well knowledge, right, knowledgeable right, person right. in public health management. Presidential advisor. Yes, he is in charge of the team now, and I want to assure Ghanaians that I mean, um, 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 uh, this is a country that is working hard to make sure that we can deal with uh, 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 corona. Do, is the money ready? The no, no. WHO is asking for I mean, us to I mean, add more I mean, money. I mean, the last time, Kolibu, they had a meeting in the CEO, the public health directorate. I mean, we are trying to work on some investments for the fevers unit. No, so he's that, asking whether the money is the ready. The money. They're asking for 35 million more to be added. No, no, I, know, 2 .5. I, I know up front is 2.5 that the Ministry of Finance has made available so that mm. if any place needs the money, they will process and pay. But mm. if we have to scale up, we scale up. Mm. If for, I, I mean, God forbid, but if there are 10 cases of corona here in Ghana now, and the investment that's going to manage the situation is 10 million Ghana cities. What are you going for? So, Who will get so the 10 million Ghana cities? wait until no, no, no. we... For now, it's the preparation you do. And the preparation does not require the money the, the prof mentioned. Mm -hmm. The prof is talking about optimal ideal preparation, which is about 35 million uh, Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. But what we have is enough to put, let the technical committee work, to have our reach facility, the training. Like I said, training is being done for workers at REACH, at Tama General, at Kolibu, University of Ghana Medical Center. I have seen them doing the training. You see, you see and they my, have my, my, well. my worry about all this thing is that we seem to be focusing on the, the elite hospitals. I, I thought that our focus should also be on the border towns. Yeah, so yeah we will do the district. If you look at the border towns, because yeah. clearly within the West yeah. African subregion, most people travel by road than by... Yeah, by mm. we have to mm. scale up. We, we have a lot of porous so borders, we actually. we focusing on cooling. But you know, know funny, funny enough, most of the time, when you get a condition and you show mm. symptoms, mm. what kills you necessarily is not a virus, okay. but it's a failure of some of your organs, right. like your lungs and all that. And that's what they normally take. Even the UK, they take you to their like well-built facilities, mm -hmm. so that you get all the necessary care. Mm -hmm. They normally will not manage a, a confirmed yeah, case of corona it. at a district level. Mm -hmm. You want to bring to a super, uh, a tertiary or quaternary level, where you can get ventilators if you need, you can get oxygen readily, you can get anesthetic in place, you can get everybody by you. Mm -hmm. That's why I guess they are doing that. But, but my doc, the yeah. uh, Dr. Ishmael Normanov is yeah. this. He actually mentioned that, look, what we have at Rage Hospital is not an isolation. So, for example, is a corridor that everybody literally uses. Yeah. And you know that yeah. for such a special uh, situations, we need to yeah. uh, isolate yeah. them yeah. so that you enter through one end yeah. and you exit through the other. Yeah. You don't come through the same yeah. place. The, immediately, as for the, the, con, the, the factors to consider mm. at a, a unit that mm. is supposed to be highly aseptic, mm -hmm. aseptic means mm -hmm. that you don't want any form of transmission of microorganisms. Okay. There are some basic steps we go through. I think Bridge is also uh, okay. practicing them. Even if it's a corridor, I mean, that people trespass all the time. Mm. Immediately it's allocated for such a purpose. That will cease. Mm. Okay. No infection unit is trespassed on a regular basis. Okay. Interesting. If you allocate a corridor for such a purpose, immediately yeah. you allocate, you stop it. Uh, educators, what, what we need to do, I mean, maybe five pointers, what we need to do. Okay, the, the, the first pointer is that if you have symptoms that are chest symptoms or respiratory, like a cough, mm -hmm. a fever, you have some difficulty in your breathing, mm. or you just are feeling nauseous with all these things, the first thing you do is to report to one of these centers we have talked to, either Ridge or, how do you call it? Uh, either Ridge or uh, Tama General Hospital. The second one is that all of us should do hand washing regularly. Okay. It does not only stop corona. Mm. Most 70% of diseases, if I would say, are carried by our hands okay. to our face and then passes through your nose or your mouth mm. and mm. enters your system. Mm. So wash your hands regularly or make sure you have a small sanitizer, sanitizer. in your bag. Hand greeting people and all that in times like that, the contact should reduce. Don't contact people easily. I mean, you can say hello because mm. of this and all that. People will say you are rude. Yeah, yeah. So because of our culture, what I tell mm. people is that mm. I know mm. what, mm. one of my professors will always hit you with a fist and not um, open the hand. The third one is, if you know you are coughing mm. or you have some symptoms, cover your mouth when you cough. You don't cough into the open air. If someone is close by you, you cough into the air, the fellow can pick the droplets. And then the, the fourth one, if you know anyone who has traveled from the countries with high mm -hmm. um, uh, reported cases, okay. reduce contact drastically with the person. Mm. The fellow should try to be isolated, self-quarantine, be at home, not uh, go to school, 
church, places where people congregate, right. you okay. are likely to spread it. And then I think lastly, we should not act in panic. Okay. We okay. should call one one two is still our emergency okay. number now in this okay. country. If you call one two that <coughs> you suspect a friend has a condition, the appropriate authorities will come close. Okay, let's go to Etanam now. Etanam, welcome. What what are we saying on Right, WhatsApp? a few messages this morning. Good morning, Johnny. Please in the Porto Regional Hospital has no MRI as we're speaking. Too bad for the region. It's a total failure of those in charge of health services in Ghana. Also, no uh pyrometry uh an instrument to check breathing difficulties i have wow. to travel from ho to a private clinic in aflau to conduct this test please ask uh ask what are they doing with our tax money good morning johnny please i want to let you know that the ct scan at ccth uh is no, that's uh, the coast Okay, it's working and has been working for some time now. And even, oh, okay, I think I, I missed that. Uh, good morning, sir, please. Oh, I think I missed that. I'm missing the messages. Okay. All right, so it says, good morning, Johnny, please. I want to let you know that the CT scan at... Uh, CCTH is working and has been working for some time now and even people come as far as Takwa to take a scan at uh, CCTH. So if I heard the MPP man say it's not working, then it is not true. Some Cape Coast. Good morning, TV3. Good morning, Johnny. Thank you for the good work. Johnny, if we can survive Mahama in the Kufuado government, <laughs> what is coronavirus? God save our motherland. That's a funny one. Good morning, Johnny and Doc. Uh, all we need is to be prepared adequately enough towards this deadly virus and leave the rest to God. Suka Abdul from Tamale. With the coronavirus, I'm tempted to believe the conspiracy theory that such deadly viruses are created by some superpowers ostensibly to cause mayhem and discomfort among emerging economies. Every human being now lives in perpetual fear because we don't know the health status of the person we are in contact with. We, if, we care, uh, if care is not taken, we will cause human extinction before the second coming of Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. Kwesi Reynolds sent that from Agona Dobing. Good morning, sir, please. My name is Apia Veronica. The community police assistants have not been paid for five months now. Mm. In fact, life has been become very uncomfortable for some Veronica, of us. Please, see if you help us. Uh, Charles Agida from Tema. Hmm. So, President Kufado on arrival was not checked and tested because he's a big man. Yo, he's doing that at his own mm. risk. I pray we should not wake up one day to hear he is gone because we can't endure with Mahama. Uh, Baumia, we can't endure with Baumia. Uh, Walanyo in Akutia says, Honorable Oko Boy is very fantastic in his submission. Any time he appears on our show and how it pains me that I'm not a delegate in his constituency to reward him with my vote. But I know the delegates there will do the needful thing to retain him. I find it difficult to understand, Honorable Mutala, why can't he do his analysis without assuming that he's bored before entering into your studio. Johnny, start checking his emotions and gestures. I wish a blissful good morning to NS Yakumi. I believe we are not ready as a country to handle this deadly disease. We lack the infrastructure, PPEs, uh, in all sectors of our health facilities. Even China used 48 hours to build a facility. Our uncompleted facilities are left to rot with nothing inside. Book not from Tempani. Thank you very much mm. indeed. Doc, I, I, I was just thinking about the OPD. Yeah. Um, if you go to Kolebu, any hospital now, the way we congregate at our OPDs, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's dangerous. So, so that, that's why I said that there's more we can do. Our health arrangement structure itself, um, the risk has some risk levels. And you see, when you go to, let's say, the UK, there are places, public hospitals that also see quite a number of cases. Once people gather the place, a risk level mm -hmm. is reached. Yes, so, as for some of the risk factors, they exist throughout even mm. uh, countries. Okay. But I admit that as a country, when you take Kolebu, for example, when I talked to management the last time, mm -hmm. they will need about 600,000 Ghana cities to bring the fevers unit to a very good shape so mm. that if you are brought as a suspected case, it can be contained. Okay. I think they are still talking to the ministry. The ministry says they've prepared um, Rage and mm. Tema. But Kolebu is making a strong case. That how how did we allow facility. it to, to run down in yeah, the yeah. first place? It oh, I think, I think investments in the public fevers you need. Mm. You know, when we say fevers, normally it refers to infectious mm. conditions. And I know that over the years, um, it's, a, it's a multiple of factors. Okay. It's, it's a leadership at the mm. un, a unit. 
I'm not saying they are total failure, but we could have done better. If they have failed, it's, let's say they have uh, failed, finish. Uh, 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 you Johnny, like polishing Johnny, too, Johnny, too much. And it's, also, it's also the quantum, the quantum mm. of the investments that okay. are sent there. Mm. And thirdly, the support that even Kolibu as a whole, I have encouraged the management to give them support. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much. I'm grateful. I, and I, by the way, the president had the thermometer gun. Uh, only that. Only, on only that. He, 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 only is that. it justified and, and, for and he washed his hands. He washed his hands. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so so he was tested. Yes, uh, anyway. it, it, but he should have been quarantined too. Yeah, it's not, it's not. He should have been quarantined, <laughs> especially coming from a place <laughs> no that had... Along with the journalist who came with him, yes. security detail, everybody. The, journal, the journalist himself lamented that yeah. when they came, just only the, the gun. The gun, yes. Oh, yes. Who knows? If the activity was so high, it had broken corona when suspension. When people <laughs> argue the president should be quiet, hey, it became a uh, uh, John Diaz is, is here. He says, uh, you have really calmed his nerves and you have done a very good job on the coronavirus education. Yeah, you're you're a sharp boy. Time. I mean, yes. uh, how, how are the grounds? We're wrapping up. In, Sorry, in you know, today I'm going for interview. Yeah, so there are three. Uh, there you are going for vetting. Vetting. Okay. There are two more people contesting. Oh really? You know, but yeah, I'm beyond I'm, getting the road fixed for oh, the people. Yeah, and yeah. Doing, Which road? And doing pro bono <laughs> at Lesma <laughs> and Charlie, all of that. You tell you playing know, football. It, it you are playing football. It, it eating it, a claw and things with the people. It does. You know we're cool. Uh, I don't but, want to put but, <laughs> pebbles in his guy. Okay. So I won't comment I, I on the road. But but I mean. You know, you but your party to, should have made a strong case for you Charlie, to go on Charlie, contesting. Charlie, it's not easy. So right now, uh, or some I'm, are more. I'm, I'm some are more. You can beg. You can. Uh, you can beg the delegates. Right now, I'm fasting. Fasting. Give him the opportunity yes. to beg the delegates to vote. You yes. can even nail down. Oh, oh yeah. right now, <laughs> one minute. The delegates, so, your yes. delegates are yes. begging them. So we are, you know, we are appealing to the delegates <laughs> to help uh, Dr. Kubo so that you know. You complete all the. You the should look into the camera straight and say, "I'm begging you, oh, please." I, I mean, I There's nothing that. wrong with you begging. <laughs> your An <dad>. appeal. <laughs> it's even su su it supersedes begging. Is that it, not it? Is so. An appeal. This is, a, this is a, a very modest and serious appeal to support the candidature of Honorable Dr. Kubo. I hear you. Thank and you. Yes. But uh, Ricky, but uh, the cool boy uh, is appealing to his constituents. The present <laughs> boys, eh, they don't like to beg; they like to appeal. You know, you know. He's uh, uh, a member of parliament for the Nigerian uh, constituency. I'm, I'm not an MPP. I, 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 even though I would, I know that he's going to be beaten in the 2020 elections by our candidate. Yeah, sure. I am very convinced that we will beat him, and I'm very convinced that we win a lot of the seats we lost. To the MPP. What we did with Lijokuku was just giving it to him in trust. Okay. And I know that course will in 2020. But for the purposes of the MPP primaries. parliamentary primaries, I think he's a fine gentleman. Mm. There is no question at all about that. He's a sharp guy. Mm. He's decent in his comments. And I said here, I think almost five months ago, that you rarely find such decent dudes in the MPP. No, I will not go there. So where you read it is you can only this part. You sell for you sell, the sell, main one. But the last one was very <laughs> comfortable because <laughs> his 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 <laughs> one is primary so yes. his his opinion remarks we will not use that one. Still genuine but we'll, and sincerely yeah. I think he's he's a fan. Yeah, yeah of course. And, I mean don't we all know the, the the only sad aspects of it is that inshallah he'll be missing in parliament in uh, I'll be with you. Okay, okay. thank you. And Honorable Mutala Mohammed is a former deputy trade minister. He's also the MP for, uh, I say MP, aspiring <laughs> member of parliament for <laughs> the, uh, the Tamale Central constituency. So, please, this is a sanitizer from Kolebu. It's made, <laughs> made in Ghana. Yes. If I will bring it under the 1D1F, you should look at it. We'll see you after the break. <laughs>